Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306, and once again I was contacted by Vividbrite, and they make some really cool uh, like semi-portable projectors, and just like really tiny ones, and you can see by the size of this box this one should be uh, pretty petite. And this is actually the um, mini projector L1, what they call, it's an LED Pico projector. Um, it's described as a pocket projector, though. You'd have to have pretty big pockets for that. I would definitely class this as a portable projector, though, because you could see by the size, it's actually very different than other projectors that I've reviewed in the past. Other ones tend to be um, flat and short and kind of wide. This is sort of like a cube shape, which I think is actually really cute. And from the marketing materials, it looks like it's kind of um, aimed at like families or kids. And so... That's actually going to be a nice departure. We'll, we'll take a look at this. <clears throat> okay, so here you can see there's a war character. <laughs> that sort of, uh, I don't know, copyright. If they have the copyrights to, to show that. But anyway, uh, the remote itself is actually... Um, it's very similar to the other remotes on like all the other projectors I've um, played with so far. It has sort of this D-pad directional... I'll show a picture of it, like a D-pad directional um, central button, power, mute, um, I'm guessing enter, menu, or options, and volume, back, and I guess this is input source switch. It looks like a little USB uh, port there, and I'm going to guess this runs off of AAA batteries. Yep, just two AAA batteries. All right. I really liked on one of the projectors I reviewed, I can't remember which one, the buttons actually glowed in the dark slightly. This just looks like opaque gray plastic, so I don't think this, this will glow. But really, like if, if any projector manufacturers are listening, Viverbrite, please make glow-in-the-dark buttons on your remotes. It's just like such a simple thing, but it's super useful. Anyway, this is actually a pretty beefy power supply too. So this guy, it's not battery powered or anything, so it has to be plugged in. And this is a 12 volt, two amp supply. So 24 watts, it's actually pretty beefy. And it's a switch mode power supply. And let's see how long the cord is. Sort of my biggest gripe. If the cord's too short, then you're limited in where you can place it. Okay, so just judging from it, um, it's probably about like four feet. Maybe four and a half feet, maybe a little longer than that. So around four feet long. Um, you might need an extension cord, uh, depending on where you want to plug this in and power it. Uh, so length might be an issue. <clears throat> open this up. It is well packed, though. There's plenty of foam like all around the projector. And I have the silver model. Actually, I didn't even mention. There are three color variants. And here you can see... There's the black and silver one, which is what I have, a yellow and white one, and I think the black and yellow one looks really nice, but they sent me the silver one, which also looks pretty sharp too. I really like that kind of contrasting colors that they chose for the face and the body. Anyway, we'll just pull this guy out. And there is an owner's manual tucked in the side here. We'll just quickly flip through that. Safety tips, et cetera, et cetera. Repairs. Don't make any repairs by yourself. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just general settings. The menu system looks kind of similar to some of their other, other prod products um, where you can select what type of media you want to play off of the, um, the USB or select HDMI. But yeah, that's kind of it. Uh, it says here maximum screen size, uh, uh, just under three meters away from the wall, you'll get an 80 inch image. And we'll test that out with my projector screen. Anyway, just pull this out, and yeah, this is actually really cute. This is, yeah, the L1. A little bit in on that. And there is a, uh, a tripod mount, which is really nice. Um, I usually use one of those like camera tripod tripod stands with the screw um, that you screw into the bottom and so I really like that this has such a small footprint and that you can screw it into that so I can easily place this then and let's see here 
I guess LR is for the, the remote sensor. It looks like a little hole with a infrared sensor in there. So I'm guessing that's the rear uh, infrared sensor. There's one on the front as well. It's right underneath this plastic bit here. Here's a lens, and it's nicely recessed. I mean, if you poked your finger in there, obviously, you'll um, get fingerprints on the lens, but just handling it, you shouldn't have to really clean that at all. Got the power button on top. Got the adjustment. You can see here, pokes the lens out a little bit, but uh, it's still below the surface. And here we have HDMI, which will probably be most of what I'll be using it for. We have our DC in, center positive, good. We have a tiny little micro SD uh, slot in there. Headphone out, which is super important. Even though this does have a speaker, probably in one of these vent holes, there's a little speaker. Uh, audio tends not to be so great on these tiny little projectors, so best to use an external like um, battery-powered speaker. And we have USB, so we can play media files off of a thumb drive or TransFlash. So, yeah. That's kind of it um, in terms of looking at this externally. This is actually a really cute unit. This would be good for little kids to just set it up on a shelf in their room, just point it at a wall, and then um, just adjust the focus and leave it there. As long as there's an outlet within about four feet of it. Anyway, uh, let me get set up and we'll get some demo footage going. Okay, so here we are set up with the uh, Vivibrite uh, projector here. And oops, <laughs> I have it on this uh, tripod or lock that so it does not fall down and yeah we have it set up it's plugged in it's just in standby currently and we have two things plugged in hdmi and a thumb drive with um some of my sample videos just to test the video quality on this and we have the adjustment dialed in so all, all i really got to do is shut off the lights and yeah just in case you guys are interested i'll be playing some uh, nes games on this so interesting to see how that fares so give me one sec while I get the lights off and get situated. Okay, so here I have the remote in my hand. Fortunately, it does not glow in the dark. Just gonna turn it on. It turns blue, fires up. Very quickly, it just had the Vivibrite logo on there, and there we are. So right now, it's not it's not set up exactly right. My the actual the throw distance is actually pretty good on this projector. From about here to about here is only, distance to the screen is only about, not even six feet, probably about five and a half feet, something like that. And the image already is about, it's well over 40 inches. And I would need to raise up my uh, projector screen there. It's obviously spilling onto the wall behind it. I, obviously, I can move the projector up a bit to get a bit of a smaller image. But actually, I think this is actually a pretty good size for content watching. I'll try not to block the screen. But anyway, yeah, here we have the uh, menu itself. And just to give you a, a size of uh, the pixel comparison, I guess you could say, uh, you can zoom in here at this size, which is probably closer to about 50 inches. It does seem to be a little bit more, not quite widescreen. I don't know the aspect ratio, but it looks almost like 4.3. So you're, if you are going to be playing widescreen content, uh, you are going to get letterboxing going on. That's just how that works. The pixel size is, is pretty large. So this tells me that for this projector, I'm guessing the resolution must be somewhere around maybe like 320 by 240, somewhere around there. It might actually be a bit lower than that. I don't have exactly a way to easily test that. But anyway, I guess we'll fire up on my thumb drive and look at some test images. Now these are 1080p test images, but this is obviously gonna be downscaling to the native resolution on this projector. Okay, so here we go. I'll just go through them. Yeah, <laughs> you can see it's not, it's not gonna be anywhere near a 1080p. You can see, I mean, colors look fine to me. Colors look great actually. It's just the resolution is definitely not anywhere near HD. Um, so this actually, give me a sec, where's the back button? There we go. Let's just back out of that for a second. Um, so this actually tells, ah, interesting. So it shows you a preview of whatever you have currently selected. If you wait a little while. Anyway, um, so my point being, this projector is definitely not for 
you know, high resolution media consumption, you're, I wouldn't sit here and watch like a TV show or a movie on this myself personally. However, I do have cousins that, you know, when they came over and they're a little bit rowdy sometimes, so I wouldn't necessarily bring out like a nice projector for them to accidentally knock over and destroy. Uh, the price point of this guy is I believe it's around like the 60 or $70 mark um, as it sits currently. So I wouldn't actually mind them destroying this. Not that I want them to, but this is actually affordable enough to put out with, you know, children and um, whatnot. And if they destroy it, I wouldn't be very distraught. That's pretty much how, you know, what in line with the price this is. So this is actually perfect for kids, I would say, definitely. And sort of the cutesy design of it sets it up to to be so just because of how small it is and the fan noise is actually pretty good too you definitely hear it but uh it's nowhere near as loud as um the much brighter projectors that i have now you can see the brightness itself isn't too bad we are sitting uh in a room it's not quite it's it's about dusk right now the blinds are closed but there's still some light seeping in i can actually see decently well around the room um, at different objects. So it's not pitch black in a pitch black room. This would definitely be bright enough um, for pretty much anyone to use. But yeah, just given the size of the projector and relatively quiet, this is um, you shouldn't be expecting like any more than this looks about maybe a hundred lumens ish um, comparatively. So definitely you want the room to be, fairly dark to pitch black in order to actually use this comfortably. And it really helps if whatever you're watching is bright and colorful, like um, like retro video games and cartoons and stuff would be. So that, that sort of further sets up that this is going to be useful for uh, watching cartoons and playing video games. <laughs> okay, so let's just see those video clips that I put on here. Let's see if it'll play. Now, these are 1080p video files, so... Oh, it just sort of auto-plays just a little demo of it. And as you can see, the aspect ratio on this... Let's just see if we could fix that aspect ratio. Bring up the menu. I guess we might as well go through this. Um, English, picture mode, standard. Colors actually look pretty good to me, so I'm not too worried about that. Aspect ratio. Let's just see if we can force this to 69. That looks much better. <laughs> I am happy with that. Let's see what else. Um, sound mode, surround sound. You can flip the image if you want to rear project or whatever. Um, factory restore, et cetera, et cetera. About the same as many of the other projectors I've seen. Now, you can see in this image... When I zoom in, those pixels are pretty big. Once you get back about, you know, six or eight feet or so, maybe it's just me, but without my glasses, I everything kind of just starts to blur around that point. And I, I don't really particularly enjoy watching movies with glasses or video in general. Um, this is definitely watchable. As I said, I would not sit through like a feature length film. At this quality, we can just start this up again. Oh. There we go. See, how do you control volume? There we go. That's a volume. So, yeah. I mean, it's acceptable for kids. <laughs> I know my um, my cousins would be super happy to watch cartoons on this. They would not mind that at all. Um, like I said, though, this definitely is not anywhere near. I, I pretty much draw my cutoff for like comfortably watching a full length movie at um, WVGA resolution, so eight fifty four by four eighty. This is easily about probably half or maybe a little less than that. So. Expect quite a lot of blotchiness in the image itself. You can see the pixels pretty clearly, actually. And this is about maybe a foot away from the screen itself. But the colors in the the um, 
like the brightness in general, definitely pretty good. Sitting through my entire um, intro here. <laughs> yeah, definitely watchable. I could fire some SpongeBob or whatever up on here and there we go. Let's just exit out of that and go home. Okay, let's just see um, how exactly do we switch to HDMI video source. There we go. So if we go all the way to the right, HDMI, it's going to hit that. It's going to go to blue screen. I haven't turned on the console yet, so give me one sec. Okay, so fire this guy up. I have my wireless controller that I made, so I'm going to be using that to play one-handed very awkwardly, hopefully. Not too bad, but yeah, you see at the bottom there, it actually says the resolution. Um, this is 720p, but obviously the native resolution on this is it's lower, so it's not going to be quite so good. But yeah, this fired right up, and I don't know, let's play... Uh, what would be a good game? Mega Man 2. Yeah, there we go. Let's just fire this up. Text is actually super clear. This might actually be an ideal way to play like retro video games. Oh, love that music. Let, let's turn that up just a little bit. Hopefully I don't get any copyright strikes or anything. Eh. Oh, man, why not? The aspect ratio still looks kind of, I don't know, something. Let me let me fiddle with the aspect ratio. Maybe if I put this on. To have any effect on it because it seems kind of squished. Yeah, it seems to have no effect on it in this case. So it looks like the aspect ratio only affects the um, like the video file playing portion, and I don't think I can adjust anything else. Yeah. That's that's going to be unfortunately one one demerit I would say um, if you're playing video games a kid's not really going to care honestly this is just a tad bit too narrow and there actually might be something I can do uh, within the display settings of this okay so I checked out another game just to to get another reference and yeah all the games are going to be playing back kind of a little bit too skinny a little bit too tall and that setting to adjust the aspect ratio does not affect the HDMI input so that sucks and one other thing that I found is um, if I scroll here you can actually see some um, here I actually might be easier if I go into a level some background shimmering sort of thing going on. If you look on the uh, left-hand side, there's just a tiny little bit. It's not the worst I've seen, but um, there is a little bit of shimmering, so that could be the emulator, but um, it could also be this display, um, well, the LCD within this projector that's causing that. This is really hard to... Can I... Wait a minute. There we go. This is how how am I supposed to play this with one hand? <laughs> I guess just float above the yeah. You can see just a, a tad little bit something going on there. Oh, oh. <laughs> can I beat this with one hand? Let's just see. <laughs> I know Kirby's easy, but one-handed Kirby might might be a little bit much. There we go. Just sail away. <laughs> Overall, though, yeah, the colors look great. Oh, yeah, I definitely cannot beat this with one hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
yeah, that, that, that's not going to happen. You know, let me just exit back to the menu. And I guess we'll fire up. Uh, I mean, I kind of have to do Castlevania, don't I? And the colors look great. This game, I, I love Castlevania. One of my favorite NES games. One of my favorite series, in fact. But yeah. You can see. A little bit of that kind of shimmering in the background. Seems not as bad, actually, on this game. Let's see. Jump. Uh oh. But yeah. I don't think I'm going to be able to <laughs> beat this level with uh, one hand. Yeah, definitely playable, I would say. Oh, yeah. There was absolutely no hope for that. <laughs> Oop. Yeah, screw it. Oh, still got tagged at the end there. Oh, okay. There we go. There we go. Let's just see. This is one of the games that you can actually pause. So there we go. I can hopefully get up and close. Yeah, it looks fantastic. Like it's like nice and crisp and sharp. Look at the bat over there. Each of the bricks. Yeah. So let's just bump back home for a sec. And so what I would say is, just from my experience using this, I wouldn't personally use this projector. Uh, but if you have kids, um, if you have, you know, every once in a while, maybe your your cousins come over, your nephews, nieces, and you want to entertain them, but you don't want to invest in an expensive projector, you don't want them using your uh, movie night projector to play games and watch cartoons, this is actually kind of perfect for that. It's it's a sub one hundred dollar uh, region. It's, it's actually significantly less. I think it was yeah about sixty nine ninety nine something like that. So it's cheap enough that if something happens, it's no big deal. It does do USB direct playing video from a USB thumb drive. You just download uh, your MP fours or whatever to it, and um, it does HDMI as well. So if you have one of these um, mini consoles here like my uh, mini NES, then, oh, it just went into a sleep mode. <laughs> if you have one of these, uh, like, classic consoles, this is perfect. Um, obviously, it's not going to do the perfect aspect ratio and whatnot. The image does look really good, though, I will admit, but it does, it squeezes everything kind of vertically there. So that's sort of a bit annoying for me personally, since I know how the these games should look. A kid's not going to care about that, really. So as long as the gameplay is fine. And I guess we can... Um, everyone's always asking me to do Legend of Zelda. We'll do a quick latency test. Now, give, continue, uh, now keep in mind that... Obviously, I'm using a wireless controller that I made. I documented the latency of this wireless controller. And it's... Something like, what did I come to? Like about three frames out of 60 of latency um, due to this. So well, let's just go into the cave and grab her sword. Find that old man. Oops. Yes, yes, I know. I know. Okay. Let's just see.
seems to be about maybe about hard to tell, but maybe a quarter of a second, something like that. So yeah, you're not going to be playing punch out with this. <laughs> and I'm sure my wireless controller isn't is adding to that as well. But yeah, let's just do another game. Actually, out of curiosity, I'll fire up uh, one of the maybe Super Mario Bros. 3 and see how that fares. So. Maybe go into a level. This actually might seem a little bit faster. Yeah, I would say it's somewhere in the avenue of maybe a tenth of a second to a quarter of a second, though I can't exactly measure that very well. It's definitely noticeable, but um, just as a kid playing, I don't think they'll really care. <laughs> they can compensate for this. So, yeah. Oops. <laughs> Really hard playing one-handed, I gotta say. But this game even looks fantastic. I mean, sprites are actually really crisp. I really like that. That it like matches up perfectly with whatever resolution this projector is playing at. Uh, the only thing being is everything looks super narrow to me. Just sort of jarring. But anyway, yeah, other than that, cheap enough to just grab and just pull out when the occasion warrants it. You can hook up plenty of things. Connectivity is actually really good for such a cheap projector. Resolution, wish it were a little bit higher. Um, but I can definitely see at this price point why it's it's going to be somewhere around um, sub VGA resolutions. And audio seems... Fairly loud enough, let's just fire it up with the remote. We'll max it out. Oh, it definitely gets loud. Yeah, definitely loud enough for a, like a medium sized room. Uh, it also does have audio output, so you can plug like Bluetooth speakers in via auxiliary cord. Um, or any other type of amplified speaker work just fine on this as well. We shall kick us back out to the main menu. But yeah, other than that, let's just uh, turn this guy off. And switch sources. There we go. And it has also, I forgot to mention, has a SD card slot too. So I prefer thumb drives. They're quite a bit cheaper, more convenient for obvious reasons. You can plug them into a computer. But yeah, this is actually really cool. I like this actually. Um, this is something I will definitely drag out for not so serious um, media consumption. Um, just when I want to mess around. This is actually something that... This is actually something that I might modify sometime in the future, maybe adding some kind of like an Ardu boy with video output. If I could stick an Ardu boy inside with a flash cart and have it all self-contained within the projector, there's, there seems to be quite a bit of empty room inside. So I should be able to stick some kind of old game console or something or a clone console inside. That would be really cool. Turn this into just a portable, throw it in a backpack, whip it out start playing retro games or something. Actually, Raspberry Pi would fit in this pretty well, too. Um, and that would have HDMI out as well. So, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I've rambled on for actually quite a while. Uh, hopefully, you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any more questions, put them down below, and I'll answer them to the best of my abilities. If you are interested in picking one of these up for your kids, I'll have links down in the description below, as well as more uh, information on the sales page. I know I, I tend to gloss over the technical exactly specifications and whatnot. I'm more interested in how something actually looks or how it actually works in real life. So anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. And oh yeah, uh, super huge thanks to uh, Viverbright for sending this in for review. 
Um, kudos on them. This isn't something I would personally buy myself, but I can definitely see use cases for it. So anyway, I, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Okay, quick addendum. I really love this tripod mount. Makes it so easy. You can use any kind of tripod and angle it in any which way you want. And that's just genius. So I really like that. Really like the form factor. The only thing is this remote. It's really hard to see what the buttons are in the dark, obviously, for obvious reasons. So if they were just like glow in the dark material, that would just do so much for you, for me um, using this. I had to fumble around. I kept having to kind of like squint and look, is that the back button? Obviously, the D-pad makes sense. That's intuitive. But I kept mixing up like the menu buttons and volume and all that. It, it's just like little things like that that they could improve, maybe just... A little bit of glow in the dark paint or something stickers, I don't know. But anyway, yeah, it's sort of one of my other gripes on this.